welcome back. And today we're getting right back into the HP 521A frequency counter. This is a gorgeous piece of uh, vintage HP equipment, all vacuum tube inside, uh, and it's supposed to give us a digital readout of the frequency of whatever signal is being input into it. And in the previous episode, we took a really in-depth look at how it actually does that, uh, except that when we plugged it in, it wasn't doing that. <laughs> Uh, it should have been counting, for example, 60 hertz, and we were getting something like 600 hertz, or some huge number that was way more than what it should have been. Now, we replaced quite a few of the uh, Bumblebee or Black Beauty capacitors, uh, and I'm kind of doing that out of just, you know, flashbacks of working on the 150A, because those were all awful on the HP 150A oscilloscope. So I was going to replace them all in this anyways, but there were three, well, I said three that we didn't replace in the previous episode. Turns out there's actually four. One of them was hiding up underneath the socket and I just didn't see it at the time. Uh, but I've got a little list here of all the capacitors that I needed to replace and the ones that, well, still need to be replaced. Uh, and C109, C202, and C216, if we look in the schematic here, uh, we can see that all three of those have to deal with the time base. Now, in order for the time base to be so inaccurate that we count from 60 all the way up to uh, 600, uh, well, the, uh, it would have to count 10 times longer, which means that the amount of time that it's counting for would be uh, obviously noticeably longer. If it's supposed to count for one second, it would count for 10 seconds. And that's something that we would very clearly notice. So I am gonna replace these capacitors, but I don't think they're the smoking gun that we're looking for. And uh, well, the fourth capacitor is uh, C205, and it is actually involved in the circuit uh, that is just sending the pulse over to the decade counters but it is only hooked up to the screen grid of tube V9, which is the uh, signal gate heptode, and I don't think it's gonna be causing the issues that we're looking for as well. But we won't know until we try, so I'm gonna pull the machine out, I'm gonna rip those four capacitors out, pop in four new axial capacitors uh, that have since arrived, uh, and then we'll fire it up and give it another shot and, well, see where it's sitting, and then maybe we can make a decision on where to go from there. So, uh, well, let's just get to work. All right, we've got all of the capacitors replaced. I checked all of the 5963s and the 5915s and they all tested good. So the only thing left to do is to check if our recap fixed our counting issue. I've got the input sensitivity here set to check. Uh, this means that instead of using a signal coming in through the input, it's actually just using the 60 Hertz coming in from the wall. Uh, so that means that Depending on what our gate selector is, we should see 0060 if it's in one second, or 0006 if it's in one tenth of a second. Uh, right now I've got it in one second. We'll turn our display time to, I don't know, about right there in the middle. And well, fingers crossed, let's flip the power switch and see what happens. Uh, well, now we've got a totally different problem. I've got zero, 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 and then it looks like two and four being illuminated at the same time on this first one here. If I hold the reset button, that doesn't do anything. If I change it to one-tenth of a second, yeah, that's not doing anything. <laughs> uh, so we've somehow made it worse. Now we're not counting at all. <laughs> All right, I've pulled out the big guns here. My uh, HP 150A is up 
testing the structural integrity of my table to its fullest, but also it's helping me discover that I didn't actually make it worse, we're just finding other problems. I found it strange that we were counting, albeit inaccurately, uh, before changing the capacitors and after the changing the capacitors we were no longer counting. So I wanted to put an external signal into it and measure that signal throughout the entire process to see where we were losing it. Uh, and well, I noticed that we were losing it pretty much almost immediately. So if we take a look at the schematic here, our input comes in here on the top left. Uh, then it goes through C201, which is a massive coupling capacitor, and then into the potentiometer R204, which is a one mega ohm potentiometer. And that potentiometer is the input sensitivity potentiometer on the front here. Now I've got two probes hooked up into the oscilloscope. One is coming off of the uh, signal generator directly, and the other signal is coming off of the center pin of the potentiometer. And so the two signals should be identical and, well, they are, which is fantastic news. But as soon as I moved that potentiometer, well, I'll just go ahead and demonstrate it to you guys. Oh, that's... <laughs> I mean, it would probably sound pretty epic in a uh, synthesizer or something, but that is disgusting. Um, but I also noticed that sometimes when I rotate the input sensitivity all the way around and snap it into check, sometimes the signal doesn't make it through. And that's what we were seeing when it wasn't counting at all. So in order to demonstrate that, I'm going to uh, switch this over to B only. We'll adjust our trigger level so it's still visible. I'll slow this down a little bit because right now we're at one kilohertz, but check is going to be at 60 hertz. Uh, and then sometimes it takes a couple of snaps. It seems to be getting better. We'll switch it all the way over, flip it over to line so we get a uh, constant triggering here. That time it snapped on, but you can see it's unstable. And that time it didn't snap on. So <laughs> you can see it, it's like it wants to, but the, oh, there it goes, there it kicked in. Um, so it's incredibly unstable, but uh, after flipping this thing back and forth a lot, it's getting better. So the next step was to trace it into the actual counters itself. And so if we take a look at the schematic, uh, the time base is massive and going to require troubleshooting all on its own, but I wanna see if the signal to be counted is getting to the actual decade counters. And that's all contained right up here in the amplitude discriminator and V9, which is the signal gate tube. All right, I've got the probe hooked up to the discriminator side of capacitor C204, which is the coupling capacitor between the amplitude discriminator and the signal gate itself. And it's putting out a pretty nice square wave, but uh, make no mistake, this uh, square wave has some serious amplitude to it. Uh, the scope probe is a 10X probe, and I'm on two volts per centimeter, and we can see that we're at uh, pretty much 20, 40, 60 volts peak to peak coming out of that square wave there. Um, but you can see that if I adjust the amplitude, the square wave kind of changes, but it stays really pretty stable given how much I'm changing the sine wave coming into it. Now I'm going to move the second scope probe off of the signal generator and put it on the other side of C204 so we can see what the signal coming out of that coupling capacitor looks like. And yeah, there we go. That looks awesome. We can see very clear uh, negative spikes and positive spikes that coincide perfectly with the falling edge and rising edge of the square wave coming out of the amplitude discriminator. Now this signal did not look this clean yesterday. The signal coming out of the coupling capacitor was just nasty. I took a bunch of pictures of it, but I couldn't figure out what was going on. And through the course of plugging in and unplugging my scope probes, I think I may have pushed a wire around and now all of a sudden it's behaving. Or maybe the machine ran long enough for uh, things to start heat soaking and functioning correctly. Uh, but we're getting about uh, 1,242 uh, hertz is what this is showing. And it is a one kilohertz sine wave coming into it. Uh, and if I switch over to check here, you can see it's showing about uh, 72 hertz. 
Uh, so again, that's about the same percentage faster as our one kilohertz signal, uh, which means that we're now functioning correctly we're just out of spec. And I think that problem may be uh, contained within this second decade counter here. Uh, and that's because, well, in the previous episode, we noticed that one of the decade counters wasn't resetting to zero, it was resetting to two. And I moved that decade counter around to some different spots to see if that problem followed the decade counter or if it was stuck in a specific position. And it did follow the decade counter and that decade counter is now in spot two. And we can see that if I change this over to one tenth of a second, we should be displaying 0006. And we're getting the six, which is excellent, uh, but we're stuck on four now. Uh, so the, the reset is not bringing this to zero. And if it's not bringing this one to zero, that means it's gonna cycle around and count faster than it should be, which is probably why we're seeing it read 1200 hertz instead of 1000. So I think this decade counter is causing us some issues with its weird reset problem. Here's the decade counter unit in question and I've gone through and checked most of it and I don't see anything obviously wrong. Uh, there's a few solder joints that might be a little suspect, in particular this one right here. So I'm going to go through and reflow the solder on any joint that looks even remotely questionable. And while I've got the soldering iron hot, I'm going to do some work on the neons. Uh, you can see that the legs on the neons look very corroded, although there's still a positive connection, uh, except um, this one right here. I can see that the leg has corroded all the way through and broken off. Uh, and it's broken off right at the glass. So that neon is going to have to be cut out and a new neon is going to have to be resoldered in its place. And if one of them has corroded all the way through, I guarantee there's another one somewhere in here that has corroded all the way through as well. Not just on this decade counter, but on all of them. So I need to sit down, find out which neons have uh, corroded through, replace those, and then inspect for mm, suspect solder joints on all the decade counter boards and reflow that solder. I think we're making pretty good progress here. I've got my scope hooked back up to the signal generator as well as the uh, wiper of the potentiometer here on the input sensitivity. Uh, this was the one that was giving us some wild waveforms every time we moved it. I cracked it open, sprayed a bunch of contact cleaner in there, and well, it's a lot cleaner. Check this out. Look at that. <laughs> it's so smooth. Now I do get a little bit of an artifact here, and I'm not sure what's the cause of that. Um, so I might need to look into that a little bit in the future. Uh, but right now at full sensitivity, it seems to be working pretty well, and the transition is just buttery smooth. And when I flip over to 60 hertz, well there we can see a uh, 60 hertz sine wave interspersed on top of a one kilohertz sine wave. Now the big question is, is, is it counting correctly? And I've got it turned a little away here so I can make a big reveal and check that out. That says one, zero, zero, zero. Every once in a while it goes to one, zero, one. And I think one and maybe two on this decade counter. I think the neons are bad in it. I replaced about six neons in these. Uh, I just, I must have missed those. Um, so this one's gonna have to come back out and those neons are gonna have to get replaced. But right now, it is reading dead on perfect. However, the decade counter that was having trouble counting is this decade counter right here, the one in the third slot. Uh, so if I bump this up to one second, 
We should get 1,000 across here, uh, but instead we're getting 1,200, uh, about 1,201 or two, because that's where my neons are burned out there. Uh, but this should be a zero down here. Uh, and well, when we were in one tenth, we see that this one, this second uh, digit here is properly going to zero. Um, so this one is not quiet resetting to zero like it should. Now, if we put this all the way down here onto check, we're pretty consistently at 72 hertz, which is a little high for mains. It should be about 60. Um, so that might also have something to do with our time base. Our time base might need some adjustment. But this highlights the problem with this third one beautifully because you can see it's stuck at two and nothing is bringing it to zero. Even if I hit the reset button down here, you can see these zero out, uh, but this third one doesn't. So I didn't fix the reset circuit on the third one and I still have some bad neons in the first decade counter over here. But for the most part, this thing is counting accurately. We made some pretty good progress in this episode. We got it counting almost completely accurately. We just need to finish that last 10% of the restoration. So I hope you guys join me in the next episode where hopefully we will wrap this machine up. But in the meantime, I'm going to keep messing with it. And I want to thank you guys so much for watching. And I hope to see you next time.